Today we're going to learn about heat gain versus heat loss from the quantitative perspective instead of just a anecdotal. Uh, this is going to line up directly with the lab you guys are going to be doing tomorrow. So as we read, it's telling us that we need to include our units in our answer. We need to include the sign which tells us the directional flow of the energy itself. And we need to find the value of the Q. Um, we're using the specific heat values on the right to identify the unknown metal in each one of these problems. So each problem we're going to have an unknown piece of metal at a certain temperature being added to water in a calorimeter at a certain temperature. So in the first case, we have a 25 gram metal block that has an initial temperature of 95 degrees. Okay. So in the metal, the mass we know is 25.0 grams. We know that its initial temperature, so final minus initial, is going to be 95.0 degrees Celsius. This is dropped into an insulated container, our calorimeter, that's holding 43 grams of water. So our, our mass of the water is 43 grams. And its initial temperature is 19.8. When this happens, the water and the metal will end up at the exact same point. The final temperature for both of these will be 24.2 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we know how to find our delta T here. We also know that water, liquid water, is the 4.18 joules per grams degrees Celsius. So what we're going to do is we need to find the Q because right now we're missing the specific heat and the Q for the metal. In the water, we're only missing the Q. But if we remember that the Q of the reaction is the negative Q of the surrounding, once I find the Q of the water, the opposite sign of that Q will be the Q for the metal. And then I will only be missing one variable. I'll be able to find the specific heat. And as such, I will be able to find out what type of, of metal it is. So our mass is 43 grams. Our specific heat is 4.18 joules per grams degrees Celsius. And our delta T is 24.2 minus 19.8. So our delta T is 4.4 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to take that and multiply it times the 4.18 times the 43. And I find that my Q is 790.86 joules. So the heat that's lost by the hot metal is the opposite sign of the heat that was gained by the water. So the Q of the water, we said was 790.86 joules. So that means that the Q of the metal would be negative 790.86 joules. So now we know our Q. To solve for this, we're gonna say, C is equal to Q over M delta T. So this will be equal to negative 790.86 joules over 25.0 grams times. Now we're going to take the 24.2 and subtract 95 from that. So this is going to be negative 70.8 degrees Celsius. So in parentheses, I'm going to put this parentheses here, parentheses here, parentheses here. So I'm going to have a double set of parentheses. So open parentheses, negative 790.86 divided by open parentheses again, 25 times negative 70. 0.8, close parentheses twice, and we end up with C is equal to 
seven. So we're gonna look up here, which one would be closest to 0. 0.447? This one would be iron. Now your job is to do the rest of this worksheet. Whatever you don't get done in class will be your homework for tonight. And I'll see you guys tomorrow when we do the heat of the specific heat of a solid lab. Be nice to the sub. Have a great day.